Hello everyone. So I think it's about time that we kick off with our presentation. So before we get to that, I'll just do an acknowledgement of country. So in the spirit of reconciliation, the University of Southern Queensland recognises that it is situated on country for which the Jagera, Yugara and Ugarubal people and in Toowoomba, the Jarawa and Gairabal people have been custodians for many centuries and on which they have performed age-old ceremonies of celebration, initiation and renewal. We acknowledge their living culture and unique role in the life of this region and offer our deep appreciation for their contribution to and support of our academic enterprise. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to our presenter. So um, Ali Sams is in Toowoomba. Ali, can you hear and see me? Yes, I do, thank Good. you. And I can hear and see you. Yeah. So we'll let Ali speak. I've got a few little questions I might use just to guide our presentation today. And then um, around um, 12 o'clock, we'll open up questions to our participants. So, um, Ali, you've worked in Chennai, India with, gender, um, with transgender children, I understand. So yeah. would you like to tell me a bit more about what view is taken of transgender individuals in, in India? Yeah, first of all, um, good morning to everyone. As my name is um, Ali and I was born, bred and educated in Singapore, but my roots were from India. Uh, thank, giving, uh, thanks, uh, thanking um, Tracy, Robin, to give me this opportunity to talk. Yeah. Yeah. The view about um, Chennai. Chennai is, um, we come from um, Southern India and the work I do, interaction and communicating with these children to identify them and also educating the people that these people, who they are, and what society can do for them. That is one. Education play a very important role there. And trying to ask them to come out from the nutshell, get to be recognized as a citizen. Um, back 4,000 years ago, uh, these people, there were more than a million people, and right now, they are known as hijras. Hijras means transpan, transgender or cisgender. The beauty about um, Chennai now, after so much of red tape and so much of, you know, legislations and all that, these people are recognized in Chennai as called Tirunangi. The meaning of Tirunangi means is children from God, respected woman and sexless. What I have seen and observed is that it's a beautiful name given to them, lovely name. But behind the curtains, I saw a lot of things which made me sadden and I thought, this is not right. They've been abused, they've been, you know, ostracated from society and they've been mocked. No benefits at all. And they are away from the, the, I mean, from what is that you call them, normal people. Why? So that take me a lot of guts to away from my family too, because coming from a caste system, my dad was a Brahmin high caste. He told me and warned me not to have anything to do with these people, but yet, I take it as a personal challenge and I'm still doing it what is the best for them right now, which we have legislation done and been recognized and we have um, P, uh, uh, people from this bin have gone to the level of police officers, government jobs and also lawyers and they have been recognized. Let you know, I have shown the part this way, but most of them don't speak English, but since I can communicate with them, they, even 
there are a few months of my stay there, three months, and now they have extended even sometimes six months. I do my very, very best of education and also ethic, I mean, hygiene. They, they, they are, most of them do not know what to do with their life. Why we are born? This question is still there, but I couldn't answer that. But I tell, get up, get your things done, and whatever I have to do, do it. Because this is what we started, the beauty um, pageant, beauty queen, there's Miss Chennai, and other interstates competition and all that. Most of them are very, very beautifully dressed up. They doll up themselves, they wear the Indian culture, they wear the bindis and jewelries and all that. You can recognize them in train station and in toll station or, or what is it, any of the bus public places. But now what I am fighting for them, a place like toilets, restrooms and all that so that they will not feel out of place, a unisex uh, toilet for them. Recognition and also for them to have the freedom of what like in Australia, we've got a lot of, you know, privileges. So this is what I'm aiming and I want a global interaction with them. Which is not only in India, they have transgender, all over the world. I say they is, they show them pictures and what's happening. Even these people, are the kids are a bit um, reserved. I do not want to expose them. The adults, when they go out to work and all they wear saris, and they say they're happy and they say, yes, we know. So not necessary, you know, to work as sex slaves because they've been branded and most of them, almost of them are sex slaves. So not necessary. So now they're lifting up their head, walking straight and say, yep, yeah, no more much beggars in the street begging for food and all that. And you have their pride too. So Ali, are you trying to lift the quality of their life, the standard of living and give them more options with education? Is that the main area that you work with them on? Most important education, that's right. It never let be led to the, the education system as in India is, is like you, uh, I mean, I don't know how to ex explain so much, but the thing is that education in, in the wider world means explaining to them there is a whole lot of people in the world and you know, what you can do is that to groom them up the, the most of them have come to that level of education then you'll have the younger one so what i would still struggling hard to send petitions and all that to other schools to accept them not to segregate them and tell them well if you uh, are mocking and, and the thing is that ed it's not educating them then the most important is educating the other people it's important to accept you know in a classroom maybe you're 40 and other normals you know we're not acceptable so the social norm must change the people have to change not they the people really have to say yep we are acceptable and, and then the most important when I say hygiene, most of them think they've got other disease and all this. No, we have to open up the concept. These are normal and it can happen to anybody, any family, and anywhere, any part of the world. That is what education is. To educate them is really important for me, which I'm still doing it. Have you found that you've made much progress in any situations with, edu say, educating others or with supporting the transgender children themselves? No, educating others is important for me because I'm going to village to village and telling them, you know, what is it all about and, you know, why are they... And uh, educating the, uh, the parents are more important than the transgender, I find it bad. They accept it. Yeah, exception is coming way. And as I tell you, um, um, a lot of um, media, a lot of exposures and a lot of, you know, um, um, books and when newspaper meet uh, all this, they will not um, tell, tell much, but I personally make sure that I'll tell them what is it, how it begins, it can happen, you know, to anyone and they, they do understand. Uh, I mean, sometimes they think, why are you doing all this? What was the reason? Are you crazy? You come from a very high class family, you see what happened to your father doesn't want you and else it doesn't matter, it's not about me. It's about 
to charity. It's about the people. We are all here, as I told you, from very, very, my journey of life will be very short. Make it a good time. Yes. Now I've got, I noticed some people are posting some questions online. So I'll, um, I might just ask one more question of my own and then it'll, we'll sort of open it up to all the other participants, Ali. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is the likely outcome for a transgender child in India as they grow into adulthood? Well, when we get educated society, as I say, they will accept. And the parents are accepting their children because India, the major age is about 18 years old. The parents are accepting while well, the kids is there. When they put up a group and say, this is mine, this is mine, it's not going to be sent away to, in a community to live. And that child feel a pride and say acceptance. Mm -hmm. So that is where we need to give them the motivation, the confidence and say, well, nothing, everything is fine. You just concentrate one thing, education. Again, I can say my taboo is education. For them, it's not necessary to see or dress up or things like it doesn't matter. Play a part in education. With education, there's so many fundamentals, so many ways to come up. And also globally, I want to expose them globally. It's not one of you, the many, many thousand millions of you around the world. Mm. The next step will be, I've, I thought of opening up something for a club for them where they can meet together when more and more interaction take place. Mm. And just as a follow up, what percentage of families do you find are accepting the education and are accepting of their transgender child? 55%. We have to make a goal from 50 from 0%. Now 55% have already accepted. Mm. Yes, the child and yes, a lot of, um, I'll go to the doctors and, you know, psychologists and all that, you know, so do not to brainwash them. What they are is not necessary to go for any other steps in the parents. Yes, their parents are accepting it. Is their children, their flesh and blood, something, you know, yeah, mm. they have to work it out with them. Only time will tell because People in remote side of India, India, you know, a lot of villages and all that. There's very important part we have to play. The city is okay, except all right. But coming to our villages and small, small community and then the car systems plays another role. And it's quite difficult. But, well, we have been the terrible legislative or we passed. They are, can vote. They're acceptable. The government has given them a lot of privilege, the whole Indian government. And I'm proud, you know, that they are recognized. And in one of them have gone even to United Nations and came back. So very, very proud of this, you know. That's wonderful. Well, Ali, is it all right if I open up questions now from our participants? Yes. Yes. So I've got some online questions coming through. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, um, I'll ask the first one. Mm -hmm. um, so Ali, do you think that there is more acceptance of transgender people in Chennai now than in the future? And do you think that perception of trans people is changing? It's changing, that's right. A lot of them is you now, and uh, as I say, they have gone to jobs, in a level, high level job, become uh, officer in, in the police force and teaching. And yes, as I say, the word, Tirunangi has been given to them. The word is a very, very strong word. Tirunangi, acceptance, and the children of God. So God has accepted them. So people have to. Mm -hmm. And um, another question is, do trans people in India go into sex work as there are no other options for them in mainstream working roles? Initially, yes, they did. Yes, that's where we are telling uh, telling the word, I put it very diplomatically, the word hygiene, right? We cleanse them and tell them not what to. Dreading and dressing is given the internal thing, they have to clean up and come out of it, yes. No more sex slave or social escort or, or whatever you call it. They mm -hmm. brand themselves prostitutes and all that, so no. It's not necessary. We can. And also begging in the street is so very common in, in Chennai. You can see them in a toll station and really begging and then they come, they give me. But the, the thing is that talking to them makes a lot of sense. And they themselves coming out to adopt children. That is so marvelous of them. They themselves coming out when they are not married. Yeah, 
Precisely, there was a marriage which took place um, a few months ago in Trivandrum. It's in on the YouTube, and there's more more to in, in the YouTube. Anyone is interested, I can bring the YouTube, and you know, and uh, and and show to them what's going on. I I can do the translation. Mm. And so, yeah, just um, as an extra part to that question, they're wondering: Is sex work? And I guess you've said also. Um, begging, is that what a lot of transgender people see as their only options? The option is no more, they can't see uh, that it's an only option because we are there to support them, right? Not necessary at all because mm. the whole community is there for them, not necessary, right? Mm. So that's what you're educating them about is their options? We are there for them. We want all of us to be there for them, right? Mm. So another question um, here is, how long have you been educating the communities and is it just yourself or are others helping you? 1990s onward, yeah, myself, it's yes. had to say this because um, as I told you initially, I was educated about all in Singapore. Singapore um, uh, is different because they have their nightclubs, they have their clubs and things like that. And in India, I find that, you know, no one even want to touch the topic, no one wanted to go that far and then just think, no, we are not interested. These are people, you know, away, I mean, despised. But yeah, I can say whenever I go to India, because I'm an Australian citizen, I live uh, here on about 20 years already. So I think whenever I go there, I got my three or six months visa they're giving me. So I go there and I do my part of it quite discreetly. Now, everybody in the police station and everyone knows who I am. I, the first thing I'll say, well, what are you trying to do? See, so, yes, trying to bring up the human race. That's what I can say. Mm -hmm. Dedicate the human race. I, are you one of them? Do you think I'm one of them? Let it be. I'm a human being. Okay. Right, it doesn't matter. Why are you fighting for them? What is the reason you are you are such a lovely lady? Your money, everything. What are you mad or crazy? See, it doesn't matter. Mm. So that's your passion. Mm. Full of love, passion, a human being. We do not know. And I tell them straight on it, your face. Do you believe in reincarnation, sir? If you do believe, you'll be born again. So you will not be surprised. That that's put them a bit, you know, because we Indians are seventy-five percent are Hindus. Yes. In the temple, because first of all, they say, oh, these people can go to the temple, can work as a temple slave or be married. I mean, yeah, I say no. These people are respectable human beings and whatever it is, we will be there. Yeah, we have some isolated cases where they caught them and after then they uh, dose them with kerosene or police and all that. But we put in a lot of effort, put a petition to charge them. Yeah, there's a lot of isolated cases. We can see that I'm the one doing my very, very best, but I don't want recognition. I don't want, you know, I'm a very private person. I don't want so much to do. I want to do for them because as a human being. Mm. All right. So we've got some other questions coming in here. Um, now, it, you mentioned that children got sent away and um, they're wondering to where did the children get sent away in the past? In the past, the, the kids would be sent away long, long ago. That's so what I heard from my father and grandfathers and all that. You sent to the temples to do work as a temple workers or sent again, you know, to be devoted to the priest, something like that. Which, but now, children can't be sent away because why? By education, by a lot of foster home or orphanage and all that would I identify them because, no. They can't be sent away because the government has already put a lot of um, um, rules and regulations. It's a responsibility. That's where I work with the family who come, can't handle the situation, want to send them to an orphanage or just dispose of this way. I go personally and talk to them in the village, you know, what you're doing is right, you know. It's like uh, if they can accept a pet and a, uh, and a dog and Modi comes and say that you can't shoot dogs anymore, you know. It's, it's a life and a soul. These people do have soul. If you can love a dog and a cat or any animals, your cows and all that, but they have the flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, another question. Um, did the British colonial, colonial experience impact India's relationship with the Hijra community? And if so, how? Yeah, they have, um, British have recognised when they're under 100 years, 100 years uh, of British rules, the Hijra, 
was recognized, yes. But then much of them, they tried even to uh, abolish the system like the sati. Like, you know, this been a bit, I mean, British rule could not interfere in the culture. And after the freedom, uh, I mean, 1945 when India got its freedoms and all that, everything went different way. They, everybody had their different, they come back to square one again, the caste system. So when they're talking about the British, you know, untouchables, it's all this must be respected, but all the, the global changing and all the, everything come back to square one, maybe I can say it's because of commercialized world, people want, again, their, their mm. titles, and they want to know who they are and dominating. Mm. This other uh, aspect, I think, um, the um, Kirajis was not, you know, um, known, but it is known today in India itself. And there are a lot of, you know, um, women themselves, right? You know, like we, are, we are fighting for it. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, now, we have a, a comment here. Please tell Ali that we think she is amazing. Oh. Doing this work since the 90s, when this topic and these people were largely out of mainstream conversation and view, she is an inspiration. Oh, thank you so much. But what I like everyone to see is that I want the interaction with these people and give them the kind of support, you know, to see we are also here, you know, and also tell them, you know, we are not outcast. And whether society accept them or well, we have to change. I want to change. We need a change. Like the saying go united we stand, divided all of them falls because it's not going to be like my work can just finish. I do not want any I want a global interaction, talk and see they are your brothers, they are your sisters. Yeah, it's a huge, huge family. I can see that you're very passionate about it. So, uh, um, and the person asking wants you to know that when we say we, um, they mean USQ and Toowoomba in general, um, thinking that you're amazing. Um, and further to that, would like to know more about your education background and how you got into this advocacy role. Okay, my education background is a long, long way to go as a school teacher in, in Singapore. And then I came down here. Yeah, education background is quite, you know, Singapore is like, you know, it's born bred. And I came down here with my four girls. They are very, very, very well educated. And and myself, if you say education, well, I'm still educating myself a lot. <laughs> long way to, for me to learn more. <laughs> educating myself to human people. No, it's not a paper qualification. Yes, I do work for Amigos as a translator in, in Tasmania. And now I'm in Toowoomba here. I'm still, you know, do a lot of translation, interpretations and all that in the quiet. And at the same time, I have a handful of kids. Um, I call them my kids anyway. And I want to groom them. And I say, no one's there in the world is alone. There is, we need support. We need, we need to give it to them. Whether we are educated or no education or power pay, I mean paper qualification, the passion, the goodness in the heart, you know, is more important. How do we interact? How do we get united? How do we see each other touching, hugging? These are important things for me. I feel when my when I go to the village, I start hugging. Then they don't, don't do that. No, I I'm a person who changing them. I give them a hug. They'll give me a kiss in my um, in my cheeks and they say, Great, I'm here for you. So I didn't got any disease, anything. Yeah, so far. Yeah, only my family members here. Yeah, that's right. I don't go back to my village. Okay. Yeah. It's been a big, quite long journey for you. Yeah, still, still fighting because why they, I mean, branded, you know, as I'm crazy, stupid. Right. <laughs> Yeah, Suzuki, silly, where she got everything, high class, everything, money, all that, you know, is immaterial to me. I'm there for them. I'll give my last blood as how I'm faithful to this country, Singapore. I mean, uh, Australia, coming from Singapore. I'm loyal. I'm an Australian citizen. I'll die for this country. I'll die for these people. Wonderful. All right, I'm just going to see if there are any questions from Springfield. Any questions here? Curious about 
and like how we can help. Is there okay. an organisation in India that's yep. doing the work while Ali's not there? So a question from Springfield is, is there any way that we can help from where we are? So, for example, is there an organisation in India that we can put our support behind in some way? Be very no, very very grateful and thank you for that. What I need is interaction. I want you to communicate with these people because I'm going there again. I just want to get get to know them, make a tour or make a group tours and all that. Go and see. Seeing is believing. We do need any financial help and all that. Not Sounds like a good invitation. <laughs> good invitation. Get a good tour. Go. I will guide the tour. I will personally be your tour guide and I will explain every festival they take part in. <laughs> I'm amazed to see them. We are not talking about just few hundred. We are talking about thousands and thousands, you know. Right. And we welcome you. We'll, you'll be our, our guest. Mm. You know? Sounds wonderful. So just inviting further questions um, from Toowoomba, from online. Anyone else have a question for Ali while we have her? So at this point, I'm not seeing anything else coming through. Ali, did you have anything further that you wanted to add with yeah. our last minutes? Yeah, I, uh, I'll be really, really happy to see that we grow, not see cut it off halfway and just disappear. We want to grow, all right? That's meaning there is no way can change them. There is whatever the issue is and all that, it's God creation, you know? No, we don't go to that part, you know? But the part is that we want to be united. That means uh, I want all of you to come out from the nutshell and say we are there, you know? We have to interact here itself because I myself do not know, you know, sometimes I go to charity, then I give charity and then I come back and they are all gone. But I want them to mingle and make an arrangement like once a week, me talk, talk your heart out, how you feel, what is it all about and all that. And then just see each one of us give her, if you don't shake, and just give a pat in the shoulder and say, we are there for you, right? And, and we want the journey to progress in which way, how? Because as you know, I don't have a surname, you know, I'd be surprised that the sums and all over the universe, you can, can't say the word sums. I'm the only sums, early sums. You know why? I come, my, that is what I deport my name because it's assurance my father say, enough is enough, we are doing that, I don't need to take my surname. See, it's something, you know, I say, I'm, I'm proud, I'll be sums. So, or whatever the Bible said, or whatever things I do not know, this is Psalms for me. So I want all of you to have your identity and say, well, we are here to support. Start a small thing, get together, make a trip to the global, go to other places and see, well, all of them, you know. It's like a, de a delegate. Want each one you to be the ambassador. That's a wonderful message, Ali. I think it's something for everyone, basically, in that. Yes. Excuse um, me. Um, and Tracy's got a question. Hi. One of the things that Ali said to me before we started um, with the Natter was that um, a lot of transgender people in India, because they're not educated and they haven't had exposure to the rest of the world, that they don't realise that there are other transgender people in the world. They feel that it's an isolated... Being transgender is... Um, something that only Indian people um, have, that they have uh, transgender communities only in India. So part of what Ali has been trying to do is educate uh, people in India that there are other transgender people throughout the world, that they have communities, and to, so that they do realise that um, being transgender is a global um, issue. Yeah, people, other transgender people in other parts of the world are having issues that they're dealing with as well, that it's not just isolated to India. So that's also part of what Ali is doing in India. Mm. Yeah, that's a wonderful uh, mission, obviously, to have, because I think that's, my understanding is it's fairly common in the LGBTIQ community that you might feel isolated and alone and experiencing it on your own. So, Ali, um, Ali you try and connect transgender people with with each other or just educate them on the presence of that community in the world? 
A community double center is recently in Kerala itself, a normal man married a transgender, you know, it's a very big issue for me because it's in, in the YouTube is, itself. And uh, the marriage took place in a temple and, and people did come. People did come and say, bless them and all that. That's, this is the turning point, the acceptance, all right? Mm -hmm. And then later part of their life, they want to adopt a child or what is it? There's a later stage, you know, because a matrimony have taken place. So to normal. So. Mm. I think we have to expose them, interaction, and tell them, you know, hey, we are all, you know, we are here, you know. The thing is, that get like what, you know, um, I don't know, there's so much of things going on in Australia right now, mm. uh, marriage things and things like that, and all that, I call it. What I want, the Indian people, which are fight very well, equality not only the quality or the quantity, you know. Equality is very important to be treated as a human being. Mm -hmm. We have achieved that. The second step and the third step will come as it grows, you know. And I feel that the interaction again with the next other outside world, they want to know their lot, you know, education, that's where we play. And yeah, you, you, you can speak something in your English, but they are getting there, right? And it's not going to be my work finishing at the end of the day. I want more and more people to, you know, to be there. As, as a society, I say, you know, united, we stand, you know, we shouldn't be divided at all. We all stand as a group because we do not know, as they say, you know, Tirunangge. Tirunangge means what? God sent people, God's child, God's children. Mm. So, yeah, the video of it still is that most of them wear saris, lovely saris, dress up, they go for beauty pageants and all that. I can bring out all the things and they are having the dance shows, they do everything. But strangely, I see that none of them dress up like men. This is sometimes I wonder, but I didn't go into that yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all of them call me Akka. Akka means sister. Uh, mm -hmm. They call each other you know, by names or Akka. Akka means, yeah, hoy. And then I have this kind of mocking people in my relatives say, hey, your brother, your Akka is coming. Your Akka, I say, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I take it like, you know, a speck of dust and for the relative, I just move on. Yes, that's right. Moving not on, moving forward. As I said, I'm not going to give up this. I will do, this is my love and my passion. I'm happy that I have, you know, come to this um, uh, stage, even though <laughs> I'm getting old each day, but age is just a number. If all of us can do, every one of us can do it. Just recognition is not, you know, we want the help of a good heart. We do not, I do not want any credits for it. I want you all to be the network. I want the network to grow. Well, Ali, I think I speak for everyone listening today that um, you're an inspiration and um, it's been a wonderful um, presentation and I think especially having a multicultural um, perspective because that's something we haven't had yet with our Ally Natters. So I haven't seen any further questions come through. So bearing in mind our timing, I think I will at this point say thank you so much for speaking for us today. Um, and um, Tracy should have a, um, a token of appreciation to give to you once we've finished here. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you on behalf of USQ. Um, and I'll just like to um, remind um, people of a few things while we're wrapping up. Um, so people in Toowoomba, you might be aware that there is... Um, a, um, a march happening in Toowoomba on, um, I think it's the 4th, um, is it on Friday? I think this Friday, someone's coming up with something to tell me. Oh yeah, we have a thank you, Ali, from one of the participants. Thank you, um, <laughs> but it's outside the City Art Gallery in Toowoomba at 4 p.m., um, organised by PFLAG, an inequality march. So that is for um, information purposes for those in Toowoomba and I have a confirmation yes it's Friday thank you mm, can I miss me last words please uh, uh, yes uh, yeah thanking you all of you everyone here and Tracy as you know Robin all of you if you all want to any one of you want to dress up 
like um, Southern Indian or Northern Indian or Indian or anything, please don't be afraid. I like to dress up people <laughs> and, you know, and your dressing is more, you know, and stand stunning and don't worry about the clothes and all the jewelries. I do have everything. <laughs> so be there, glamour, smile, and then, you know, no need to just be dressed up, right? And just come, you know, and say, we are here, right? Dressing is for everybody, <laughs> right? I think we've got a lot of wonderful invitations from you, Ali. So don't be surprised if some people take you up on that. Yeah, definitely. All right. So I'd just like to, can I get through? Yes. So I'd just like to um, remind people after we hear people speak at our natters, it might be helpful for you to speak to someone if you need support. And Ali has spoken about this a lot about talking to people. So you'll see some options there on, on the slide for talking to people, including with USQ, with our counsellors, but also other services in the community. Staff members have a specific option there as well. So it's not just for students, staff as well. And as always, if you do have feedback on our um, Network Matters um, for today, feel free to email us at ally, sorry, at ally at usq.edu.au. And coming up next month, we actually have our final Natter of the year. And that one will be hosted in Ipswich. And we will have Nicole Hugh from Relationships Australia Queensland. Um, Nicole runs the Rainbow Program for Relationships Australia Queensland and Ipswich. And she'll be talking about developing more inclusive support services for the LGBTI community and the importance of mental health and wellbeing. So at this stage, I'm going to sign off. Thank you all for joining us. And please, um, for those of you who um, are interested, the round table will be starting at um, one o'clock. So you should hopefully have a Zoom link if you want to join in or you can join in with the people in Toowoomba. So I hope you can join us then. All right, thank you very much, Ali. <laughs> Thanks everyone for participating.